Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, I know that every single one of us deal with challenges in our life. We deal with circumstances, and, uh, and sometimes the very things we deal with are the things that bury us. They bury our faith. It buries our hope. It buries our, our love. It buries our, our passion or our drive. But, um, but because of Jesus, Jesus can give you the strength to get back up. And, and we're, man, we're cheering you on. You're going to go from five minutes to ten minutes to ten minutes to an hour to seeing you walk every day in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But notice that. That many times we're just waiting for God to do something, but God's really waiting for you to do something. God will bless what you do. God will empower what you do. And so the, the purpose of this series is for us to come back to the truth of it's Jesus. Everything in us, everything through us, everything that we'll do for him is for Jesus. We, we as believers have to make sure that we are carrying that name that his name is our banner. His name is our strength. His name is our peace. His name is our joy. Uh, let's start with this. How many believe that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a major? How many believe that? Lift your hand if you believe that. You believe that Jesus Christ, please engage with me. You believe that. Okay, awesome. How many believe that God allowed a woman by the name of Mary to conceive a child who God helped conceive through the Holy Spirit and told Mary, call him Jesus. How many believe that craziness? You believe, wait a minute, you believe that? You believe that the Holy Spirit had enough power because of God the Father to help Mary conceive a child named Jesus? How many believe that? Lift your hand. What in the world? You honestly believe that? Are you sure you believe that? I, your yeses sound weak. Some of you are like, is he, is he, does he mean no? Does he mean yes? How many believe that the Holy Spirit is the one who gave Mary the conception, gave her the power to conceive this child named Jesus? Okay, 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 awesome. So if we believe that, then why can't we believe everything else that Jesus said in his word? Like, we'll believe everything, but, right, we'll believe that he was born in a manger and that he was a baby it, it, born in Bethlehem and that the Holy Spirit was the one who uh, conceived the child and his, the child would be named G. We believe that. But then Jesus begins to give us, you know, some, some 411 so we don't have to call 911, right? And look what he says, John 14, 12. He says, what I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone, anyone who believes in me will do the works I have been doing. In fact, they will even do greater things. That's because I'm going to the Father. So, so think this way as we're thinking it's Jesus, it's Jesus. I know that many of us here are believing for some sort of breakthrough or a dream to come to pass. Uh, or our health to improve, something like what Danette was sharing. And, and, of course, after Danette was in that Las Vegas thing, I didn't even know she was experiencing that turmoil inside. But praise God because of Jesus and some wonderful people that helped you through that. That is awesome. But let me tell you something. Jesus said, I want you to know that if you believe in me, you're going to do some great stuff on this earth. You're going to accomplish some big stuff on this earth. And it's not just for you. It's for us, right? Because anything that God gives you, anything that God plants in you, any vision, dream, any desire that lines up with God is something that he placed inside of you. And he wants to see it come to pass more than you want to see it come to pass. If you need healing in your body right now, do you know that God wants it more than you? But we got to come back to believing. Knowing about Jesus is one thing. Believing in Jesus is another thing. He says, and anyone and whoever believes in me, he or she will also do these works. In fact, they'll do greater works. Now, what are you saying, Pastor? Are you saying that we're better than Jesus? Are you saying that we're going to do greater miracles than Jesus? No. 
Because there will never be anyone greater than Jesus. But here's what that verse is saying. He's saying, um, I only had a lifespan of walking in, in this mission for three and a half years. You, on the other hand, you have a lifetime. And it's in this lifetime that God not only wants to see great things happen for, for your life, but, but great things to also happen through your life for other people. And he says, and I have to do this. I have to allow you to do this because my mission is done. I got to go be with the Father now. Look at the next verse. Look at this verse. Matthew 20, 18. He says, and Jesus came and he spoke to them saying, all authority. We say all authority. And, and please, I know that you may be here like, what is he, what is he trying to do? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get us back to the, the core of Jesus. He says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. What does that mean? Jesus wasn't just trying to brag that he has all authority. Jesus was basically saying, okay, now that I'm going to the Father, I am now delegating to you my authority my dominion my power so that you can accomplish the things that i have placed in your life and how many know that every single one of you you do have a purpose in this life you weren't born by accident you were born with a purpose and and the only way to fulfill that purpose that that's inside of you some of you have never even discovered that yet but guess what in jesus you can discover that purpose and i know that because i'm one of those people that discovered it i was lost and then i was found Right? So, and then I discovered I wasn't born in ministry, right? I had a life prior to ministry. I had a career prior to going full time ministry. But how many know that as you keep focusing on Jesus, Jesus reveals just a little bit more on why, what you were born to do on this earth? So he says, hey, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you authority, I'm delegating authority to you. Authority for what? Authority to live this life. Authority to, to, to trump and overcome anxiety. I give you authority to, to speak to the storms instead of talk about the storms. Authority to speak to your mountains. Authority to cast out demons and darkness from your life. Authority that when you walk in your house, you don't have to be afraid. Just by that name, Jesus, demons tremble. There's something about that name. That gives you and I authority to call those things that are not as though they were. Do you realize that we have authority to bring things that are in the invisible realm into the visible realm? Like we have that kind of authority. How do I know that? Well, when I was dealing with, with, with cancer and, and, and they were very clear, it's a 10 by 10 inch mass. It's in between your heart and your breastplate. Let me tell you something. Okay, fine. That was the fact. I wasn't denying the fact, but I was defying cancer. How, would I, how do I defy cancer? I started saying, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke you. I bind you. Cancer, you will leave my body. And I wish I could tell you that, bam, it just left. No, it was still there the next day. It was there the next week. It was there for a whole month until I had to go through surgery. But let me tell you what happened. When they removed the mask, they couldn't find a trace of cancer. How did that happen? People were like, listen, the pathologist in the hospital said... We, we named you the miracle man. And you know why? Because every time my doctors and my, 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 my oncologist is, is a, and he's still my oncologist to this day. He's a Jewish man. And so they saw us praying in the name of Jesus. They saw people, prayer after prayer, scripture reading after scripture reading, standing. Even when I'm like, you know, doc, man, I love you, man. Thank you for giving me the facts. But you still know what I stand for. I'm standing for a miracle. I'm standing for healing. Why? He gave us authority. We have the authority to change and alter our, our journey, our life. That's not just for health. That goes for everything emotionally, physically, spiritually. But we have to come back to the name Jesus. It's not that Jesus was being so cool and telling his disciples, hey, man, I got authority over uh, everything on this earth. No, he's like, I want to share this authority with you. And if we're going to see breakthroughs like we're seeing with Danette, and, and she's still going through her process, obviously, but that authority comes through Jesus, Danette. There's, there's no other name. You know, it's not in the name of doctors. It's not in the name of your spouse, in the name of your children. It's in the name of Jesus. It's that name. There's something about that name that will change our life. Amen. So he says, and Jesus came and he spoke to them saying, all authority. Everybody say, all authority. 
I love that. So let's go to another verse because I want to take you somewhere this morning. Because you got some things to accomplish. And maybe you didn't make it happen in 2018, but oh, you're going to make it happen in 2019. No more excuses. Here we go. Philippians 4.13. You ready? I can do what? I can do what? Okay, watch this. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I can do all things. Anything that you, that you feel led or called to do on this earth, God gives you the strength to accomplish that. And so he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, yesterday we had our leadership uh, party just to honor them and thank all of our, our leaders that work tirelessly all year long, and um, including our volunteers. Uh, but the leaders go extra, extra, extra hard here. Um, and every year we have a specific word that God speaks to Elevate Church. Every year. And, and every year we bear fruit off of the word that God gives us. And so the word that God gave us for 2019, and I'm preparing you right now, are three simple words. The first one is, I can. Second one is, I will. And the third one is, the end. That's what Philippians 4.13 is saying. He's, when, when you say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength, you are basically taking on this word from heaven that when he said, I can, I will, the end. I can, I will. Let's say that together. I can, I will, the end. Say it again. I can, I will, the end. And that's what God is saying to so many of us for 2019. When, as a matter of fact, when I throw out some things and I go like this, you say, I can, I will, the end. I want to be out of debt because I've been in this debt for 10 years. And I've gotten so comfortable with it. But now I need to come back to the idea and the thought and the word of the Lord because he said, I can, I will, Man, I have been carrying this weight for too long. I keep talking about it every year. As a matter of fact, I treat my weight like rollover minutes. I just roll it over to the next year. <laughs> but enough is enough because. I can, I will, you know what? I've been so comfortable in this job. I work hard. I'm always on time. I never complain. I go above and beyond. As a matter of fact, I literally take the scripture that Jesus said, when they compel you to go one mile, go two. I go two and some. I think it's time for me to ask for a raise, a promotion. I'm ready for the next level, whether it's even a, a, a position that God wants to give me. You know why? Because I, I, can, I will and see, we got to come back to that place. We got to come back to that heart. We got to come back to that faith in Christ that I can get out of anxiety. I will get out of depression. And that is the end. And when I say it's the end, it's not that we're being cocky and that's the end, praise God. No, that's the end of whatever it is you're breaking up with. That's the end of doubt. That's the end of fear. That's the end of negativity. That's the end of excuses. That's the end of whatever's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And now I have an I can spirit, I will spirit. Why? Because Paul got the revelation. He said, man, you know what? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Why would he say that? Was he trying to be cute? No. God gave him a huge mission. He told the disciples, Go, therefore, into all the world and preach this gospel. And so many of us, we read it, we're like, isn't that awesome? That's so cute. I mean, they didn't have a, trans they didn't have a, a transit system. They didn't have buses, trains, cars. Man, they were riding, you want to know the original Mustang? They were riding a donkey. <laughs> That's how they were making this happen. They were journeying for days and weeks and months. Paul would stay in one city for two years. Just to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you know what? Just like Paul is a human being like every single one of us. Paul was nothing special other than he had this desire to obey God. When God gave him his mission, he took it upon himself to say, I'm, I'm going to do this. And, and it overwhelmed him like you've probably been overwhelmed. When you started your business, opened your store, was it overwhelming? Did you feel like there were some days where you just wanted to shut the store and say this was a bad idea? Huh? Did you already fire yourself like 10 times by now? Yeah, yeah sure, ten, totally. Man, I have, I, have, I have resigned a million times at Elevate Church already in my own head. But then the Apostle Paul says, 
Man, when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm feeling like everything is just, just piling on me, when I, feel, when I feel like I'm being buried, literally alive, and I just don't even feel anymore. He said, I, but I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. We got to come back to Jesus, guys. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I can do all things through Christ. I want to stop that addiction. I can, I will, the end. You can, you will, the end. Now, how do I do that? Well, I think as believers, we have to become unreasonable. Everybody say unreasonable. Look at the person next to you and say, you need to be unreasonable. What does that mean, be unreasonable? Because that's normally a negative term, right? You're so unreasonable. Right? It, it can go negative. But when we say as believers that we should be unreasonable, we're basically saying that we need to be without reason. What does that mean? That means that I get it. We have logic. Okay? God gave us a brain. Praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. We have logic. And it's, it's not saying that we are insane either when we are literally without reason. Right? We're trying not to come up with a reason of why we can't see that healing, that breakthrough, or that change or transformation in our family, in our life, in our kids, in our marriage, whatever. They're, they're, we can't make up a reason for that. And so faith doesn't reason with logic. I mean, I can't begin to start asking you, do you honestly believe that the Holy Spirit helped Mary conceive our, our Savior, our Lord? And y'all said, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Uh. But then we start talking about, but okay, so Mary had to come to a place of being without reason. And to accept this huge, huge dream of God. And his dream was to save this world from damnation. To save this world from its sin. To deliver his people because he loved us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. And so think about it. It started with a woman by the name of Mary and a husband named Joseph. And God said, you will conceive by the Holy Spirit. Don't you think, just for a minute, come on, let's just be human for a minute. Not, don't, the Bible's not a fairy tale. It's, it's what people lived. It's, it's what people like you and I did in obeying God. And they had to come to a place to be unreasonable and without reason and accept what God was saying to them. When the angel showed up in that house and started talking to them, they had to go ahead and leave logic on the side because it doesn't make logical sense, does it? It doesn't. Does it make logical sense? It doesn't make sense at all. But obviously, we see the attributes and we see the fruit and we see everything that God has done through this gospel and how it's changed lives for over 2,000 years. And so God doesn't need anyone to validate what he does. God doesn't need any man's approval. When God wants to do something, he does it, period. He's just looking for someone who will believe him. So faith doesn't reason with logic. He said, you are to walk by faith, not by. Danette decided to walk. And that took faith. Yeah? That's taking some faith, girl. Right? That takes faith. But it also takes walking. Right? She can't just sit there and be like, okay, Lord, just make it happen. She's doing something about her miracle. She's doing something about her breakthrough. God wants us to do something. And when he, and when he says do something, he says do it in my strength. Do it with, with the I can spirit in Jesus. I can do this in Jesus. When, 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 if you are a janitor at a workplace, I sweep in Jesus' name. If you're a CEO in a company, then you know what? I lead this organization in Jesus' name. Everything I do, I do in Jesus. When you start thinking like that, you start taking on the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, you think different. You live different. You talk different. You, 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 you reach different than most people. I mean, think about just the, the facts. 85% of Americans hate what they do for a living. 85. 85. That means that only 15% of this population actually love what they do. 85. You know why? Because we settle. We, we, we allow the pain, the suffering, the hurt, 
even the dream and, and the desires to want to commit and, and to go all in for We let life bury us. And before you know it, you're just this pile of, of have you ever felt just like being a pile of dirt? Have you ever, I felt like that many times. I just feel like this pile of dirt. I feel like, man, I'm just buried in anxiety or stress. Or, and we just, we just let life, you know, play a number on us. But you know what? The only way to get out of this is that we have to abandon reason. You got to abandon that. How, how, how is this going to be possible? Jesus' name, man. How are you going to get healed of cancer? In Jesus' name. I'll never forget the moment the words came out, Hodgkin's lymphoma. I said, in Jesus' name, by his stripes, I'm healed. Those were the first words out of my mouth. Man, when they had me in the urgent care. And mind you, it wasn't like I was just going to the doctor's visit. Oh, no. I was in critical care, intensive care. It was hell. It was pain. But the only words that would comfort me was Jesus. Jesus. Right now, maybe you're in pain internally, emotionally. Jesus, Jesus, come back to Jesus. How is this going to be possible? How am I going to get out of the situation? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen? Yeah, we got to abandon that. I mean, when you, when you think about just the planet, if you have an issue with, with abandoning reason, just go outside. Look at, look, at, look at the earth. And you just start looking at the trees, and you look at the stars and the moon, you're like, man, I mean, that should give you a reason to believe. Like, man, there's got to be someone greater. I put it, put it this way. You have this whole Mars, Mars team. You know how we have right now a little, uh, 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 I don't know what you call it, a ro ro rover? What is it? Yeah, rover. We have a rover in, on Mars right now, right? Dude, would you ever think in a million years that we would have a rover on Mars? And you know what they said? They said that rover just, um, just, uh, got sound bites of wind on mars have you go to facebook go to nasa and, on, on facebook page and watch and look at all the images of mars i know many of you may be like well yeah who cares and, oh no it is awesome when you think about oh my god we're, we're in mars what the heck mars how did they do that well you have to think that people had to abandon reason all these people, they, 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 they defied gravity. They defied uh, uh, anything that has to do with, with, with chemistry and, and whatever. They defied everything, science, everything. How did that happen? They had to abandon reason. And mind you, they failed over and over again. Prior to being in ministry, I was an internal investigator. I arrested one of the main guys for the first Mars uh, expedition that they were trying. This was years ago. Man, for stealing. The guy was stealing. But it's shocking how many times they failed. Maybe you have failed over and over again. Maybe you have failed your family. Maybe you have failed morally. Maybe you have failed relationally. Maybe you have failed in, in life, period. But how many know that if you don't quit and you get back to Jesus, he can turn things around? But you got to abandon reason. You got to abandon that. Because life will tell you, you're done. Life will tell you, you're not coming out of this situation. I love the fact that we have a world that we can look at because God painted a preferred picture for a future that he wants for us. And that should inspire us to say, man, if God, if God can set the, the stars in the sky, if God can say, let there be light, and light is still to this very moment, this very minute right now as we're speaking, light is still expanding. It, is, it has yet to stop expanding. It's still going. Light is still going forth. That's amazing. That should just bring the awe of God back in your life and say, man, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I love this. Look at Mark 9, 23. It says, and Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. Notice it puts a little if in there. That means that you have a choice whether or not you want to believe for whatever it is you want to accomplish. He says, if you can believe. If, everybody say if, and that's a big if. You can stay where you're at. You can live comfortable and, and, and not reach further for more, and that's cool. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can be someone that's 18 years old sitting in this congregation, or you can be someone that's 75 in this, in this church right now, and you're, you, both of you have opportunity. Both of you have potential. The only thing between you and God's breakthrough and blessing is your reason. That's it. 
And I get it. When you hear something like this, you're like, man, Pastor, thank you so much. I can't wait for the new year. Well, let me just, <laughs> let me bring you some 411 real quick. A new year doesn't make a new you. Yeah, everyone's always going, I can't wait. Man, I'm just so done with 2018. I'm so tired of this year. I just can't wait for the new year. Well, guess what? You will still be there next year. And so a new year does not create a new you. A new you will create a new year. See, it's not the clock or the hand that is clicking the minutes. It's not time, right, that determines my life. It's not the moving of a hand. It's the moving of a mind that will change my life. And too many of us have stayed with the same mindset for too long and you haven't changed. You still have the same, the same drama, the same attitude, the same problems, the same, the same everything. And God's saying, come on, I'm trying to bring new wine to you, but I can't put new wine in old wineskins. Read your Bible. God wants to renew some minds. He wants to change the way we think. Romans 12, 1 says, and do not be conformed to this world. You know, yeah, the world has its own mindset, but Jesus says, put on the mind of Christ. Why? So that we can renew the way you think. When I just think about my history in life, I mean, you know, I grew up in, in, in the hood. I grew up, you know, not, in not a very healthy community or environment. Uh, horrible in school i mean i don't even know how i made school uh went to six high schools and just constantly just i i really i wasted my youth i wasted my childhood and that's in all honesty but there's something about jesus when i came to christ i started reading the bible four or five hours a day every single day i just kept reading the word reading the word mind you no education no training, no background of anything that has to do with bettering my life. I just came to Jesus. And I came to Jesus with the intention of saying, Jesus, save me. Save my life. Save my mind. Save, save, just save me. And I did my part. Okay, I did what Danette did. I started walking the treadmill of the word. Reading the word. Confessing the word. Speaking the word. Getting a better understanding of God's word. And as I started doing this, God started just renewing my mind. At that point, I was just starting out. I was 21 years old, started as a regular minimum wage associate employee at this huge company. And in five years, as I was just serving God, seeking God, trusting God, you know, taking the authority he gave me and, and asking God to help me renew, along with some reading, of course. I started reading, and I've, I've never been studious. I, I, it's hard to even keep me focused because I have to be moving around a lot. And so I'm, I, I'm, I'm applying myself. But how am I doing this? I'm applying myself because Jesus is telling me that there's more for my life. Jesus is saying that I, I, I want to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can ask, hope, or even think or imagine. But that doesn't just happen. We have to apply ourselves. And so as I started doing this, man, things started changing. And as I started changing, my career started changing. I went from associate to supervisor, from supervisor to manager, from management to district manager. I'm telling you, there's something about Jesus. And, and let me just say this. I have to say this. In the company I worked for, you had to have a degree for the position that they were giving you because it was a district position of all Southern California stores, and they wanted someone with brains and intelligence and that knew how to put two sentences together, knew how to put processes. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Never been to college. Never went to any, you know, uh, short-term courses of business. The Lord literally renewed my mind. And it's something amazing and incredible. And so I'm here to tell you today, the only limitation is the one that you set in your reason. It's the only one. Stop looking at time. Well, I'm just waiting on the time of the Lord. Praise God. Well, maybe that time expired and you're still waiting. God's like, hey, man, I, I, I told you you can do that like two years ago. And you're just still, you just want to sound spiritual. Just, you know, God's timing. Praise God. You know, his timing is good. And then there is his timing. Sometimes you can be premature where you weren't ready. Kind of like the children of Israel. God delivers the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then God says, well, there's two ways to get to the promised land. There's a shortcut. 
But if I lead them through the shortcut, the enemy is already there waiting. They haven't developed a mindset of being a warrior yet. So let me take them through the long route. So as I take them through the long route, which is going to take more time, I'm going to help develop and grow their faith, their trust, their hope, and help them renew their mind so that once they get to the enemy, there's going to be a great fight. Right? So sometimes you're thinking, well, God, why didn't you just do this sooner? Because you weren't ready. And then some people are just overcooked. <laughs> Say it with me, I can. I will. The end. Stop fighting change. Stop fighting change. Stop resisting change. As if change was your enemy. I mean, what can be worse than the experience you're already going through and just accepting change? Like, what can be worse than change? I mean, you're already in a predicament. Why not just go ahead and hug change? And breast change, right? Like, okay, come on, change. Let's make this happen. How many are ready for change? Yeah, we got to, guys. Because you know what? Many of us, we want a new experience in 2019. You want new experiences with God. Well, let me tell you something. The only way you're going to get a new experience is when there's a new you. You'll never experience a new something. That means, I get it. I want to experience new breakthroughs financially. I want to experience new breakthroughs uh, family. I want to experience new breakthroughs in, in, in uh, leadership, I want to experience miracles. I want to experience, uh, uh, you know, movement and progression of what God has for this church. And when I say this church, I mean you, because when you better, the church betters, right? I want to see all, but, but check this out. That's beautiful that I want to see all that. But just wanting to see that is not going to make it happen. We, we, we have to make a personal decision to say, okay, what are some areas in my life right now that I have to start addressing in order for me to see the fruit that I want to see? Because if not, you're going to get bitter. You're going to get disappointed. You're going to be frustrated. And the only person that is causing all this is you. You're getting this. <laughs> A new year with an old man will not give you a new experience. A new year with an old man or old woman, and I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about an old mindset, an old way of thinking. It's not going to give you a new experience. We got to put on the mind of Christ. Amen. I want new experiences. But can I also say this? Don't just be all excited about the new miracles and new breakthroughs. Like, man, I can't wait. My new friends. Let me tell you something. What else comes with that? New enemies. You want more? More cost. Yeah. I always tell our staff, listen, don't get comfortable. More people, more problems. Guys, get ready. Yeah, it's true. I got more complaints, more drama, you know, but then I also have more blessings, more, 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 more progression. So don't, don't marry the idea that once I renew my mind, everything's just wonderful. Praise Jesus. Oh, no, man. All hell's going to break loose in your life, at least in one of the months of next year. But Jesus, 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 amen? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. He has me, and I have him. And it's going to be good. It's going to be solid. So, so that's part of change. It comes with pain. It comes with it. So you have to accept that. So then how do I handle that, Pastor? Okay, what do I need to do? You need to break the pattern of your thinking. Because right now, every single one of you have a pattern. You have a pattern in the way you think. What's paralyzing you right now? What's keeping you from moving forward? I'll tell you what, it's the pattern. Right now, you already have a paradigm of how you think, how you see, how you believe. And what God wants to do is he wants to bring a paradigm shift by his son, Jesus. A paradigm shift. A change. Come on. Uh, some of you are looking for happiness. Well, happiness it's temporary. How about let's seek joy? Because joy will eat happiness for breakfast any day, right? Man, I, I can be happy right now. Like, I'm happy. I'm going to go to lunch after this. Someone's making dinner for us. I'm like, happy. Yay. But then I'm going to go home back to reality. Whoa. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Right? So, so that's temporary. I'm happy. I'm going to Disneyland. You want to be happy? Go to Disneyland. Fine. Be happy for a minute. But guess what? You're still going to have to face 
whatever it is that, that's at home. You're still going to have to face yourself. And you can do that with God. So we have to change the, the thinking pattern of our life. Once again, it's not a movement of the clock that determines your life. It's the movement of your mind. It's starting to move these minds forward. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's awesome. But I'm in the storm. Okay, no problem. Just go through it, but grow through it. All right, don't, just, don't just say I'm going through it. No, say, you know, as a matter of fact, for now on, anytime you're going through if I ask you and you're going through something, and you just say I'm, I'm going through the storm right now, Pastor, just say, you know, I'm growing through this storm right now, Pastor. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting, I'm, getting, uh, I'm building faith muscle. I'm, 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 I'm seeing that, you know what, that, that this is temporary. This is not forever. I'm growing as I'm going. Don't just go, grow. And you'll see that God will do amazing, amazing things. You know why? Because if you just, if you just, if you just let life pile dirt on you, you know what happens? Then you're buried. And then when you live a buried life, then you basically, you have no respect for the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. That's why, that's why on purpose, God said, yeah, let's bury my son. You know why? Because he was going to unbury him on the third day. And so maybe right now your dream is buried. Maybe your health is buried. Maybe your peace is buried. Maybe your vision is buried. Maybe you buried it and it's been buried for a long time. You probably already forgot about it. It's been buried that long that I don't even know it existed. But now that you mention it, oh my God, you're right. There was a dream at one point. Or a vision. Maybe at one point, some of you, you're like, I want a home one day. I want to own my own house in California, which you need a miracle for that now. <laughs> but why bury that? Why would you bury that? When you have Christ on your side, when you have wisdom on your side, when you have favor on your side, why would we bury those things that Jesus resurrected with the intention for us to live a life in him with victory? Not perfect. But in victory, but here's what I'm here, I'm here to tell you as we're in this series. Every time you remind yourself of Jesus, I'll never forget. I'd be up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in horrendous pain. People, because I was in there for 30 days, I saw people that were in my room that died. Just hearing those machines go beep, and then they called the code blue, and then people. You know what that did to me? I'm thinking, am I next? My God, I'm believing you, but am I next? And, and it was just constant pain. And, and you hear moans in the hospital. Ah, uh, ah, uh, of people. And, and you're just like, and that's what life is. Life will distract you from your deliverance. Life will distract you from your freedom. Life will distract you from your breakthrough. Life will bury you and tell you you're not coming out. But every time you set your mind on Jesus, and I remember I couldn't take any more uh, of the medicine because they would overdose me if I kept taking the medicine. I was on a heroin drug in order to take the pain away because uh, I, morphine doesn't work on me for some reason. It just does not work at all, like zero. And so they put me on this heavy drug, but they couldn't give me too much because then they'd overdose me. So then they said, you know, we're sorry. We can't give you more. What happens when this, this, this world, this life tells you, sorry, there's nothing else I can do for you? I'll tell you what. You say, Jesus. And I'd be in that pain in the middle of the night, and I would just be like, Jesus, Jesus. Je and let me tell you something. Every time you say the name of Jesus when you're in pain, you're removing a little bit more dirt. Every time you say Jesus and you remember everything Jesus did for you, when you begin to remind yourself, no, wait a minute, I have the name above that's every name, you begin to undig the dreams that got placed in your heart, the dreams that got placed in your life. Every time you start saying Jesus, 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 he gives you the strength to go ahead and dig dip in that, in that dirt and begin to uncover your health again. Because some of you right now, maybe you're at that place where you're not, you're not, you're not in good health. Or maybe you're at that place where you're buried in financial debt. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not saying that you just say Jesus and everything changes. But let me tell you something. That's the starting point that starts the change. It's the starting point. It's the foundation. It's the why. It's the reason for the season. His name is Jesus. And God is constantly trying to get that into our hearts engraved. 
As a matter of fact, let me tell you how much he wanted to engrave it. There's this, this molecule, molecule cell in our body that is called laminin. And some of you have probably heard of laminin. Laminin is a very vital part of our body. Why is it? Because this laminin, this laminin cell, this molecule is the very thing that communicates to over 10, maybe 16,000, maybe 18,000. There really is no rough estimate of how many cells we have in our body. But this one cell communicates and tells the rest of the cells how to function and operate through the rest of the body. Isn't that interesting? And it's called laminin right? And this laminin is not only something that communicates to every cell, every molecule in our body, but it's also the lining. Everybody say the lining. It's the lining that keeps every organ in its place inside your body. It's not only the lining of what keeps your organs in place that keeps everything together, but it's also the lining that keeps your flesh on this muscle, on this body. Without that laminin, your flesh would fall off. Without that laminin, we would fall apart. As a matter of fact, laminin is like the rebar of someone's life. Laminin is like the steel in this rock that Jesus has saved, and it's what keeps us up and straight. Without the laminin, we would all fall apart. We would just fall. And what's interesting is that when God says... You're my child. When God says, I created you with a divine purpose, God will also stamp things uh, 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 in our lifetime that will remind us of how powerful our God is. Let me show you what laminin looks like. This was under a microscope. And then here's what the health scientists also give the other picture of what it looks like. It's the shape of a cross. Think about that just for a minute. It's the cross that keeps us together. It's the cross. Look at what Paul says. I'll prove it to you. Look at Colossians chapter uh, 1 verse 15 through 17 says, And the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created. How many things? Things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones of powers or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. Next verse, verse 19 says, And for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And through him, meaning Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. I don't have time to get into it because I'm out of time, but check this out. In the universe, in our deepest, darkest galaxy, they found another marking, and it's the same shape as the laminin. It's a cross. So when God says, I'm the creator of all things in heaven, and I'm the creator of all things on earth. Well, guess what? You were created on earth, and there's a whole galaxy in the heavens that God said, and I will stamp them both so that no one can ever say that in me all things are created. When you come to that truth, you start looking at your problems. You say, nope, in Jesus' name, all authority has been given to me. All authority. It may not change tomorrow. It may not change. It, it, it could. I don't know. It could change in an hour. It can change in a day. I don't, that's between you and the Father. And if it doesn't change in a year or five years, that may not have changed, but you changed. There's something about you that you're able to walk this life and say, you know what, God? I'm good. It took me a year to go through my process of healing. One year. But every year, every, every day, and then years, still, to this day, I still have to go every year to get checked. Every year. And, uh, and sometimes I don't like the way it feels because they have to put a drug in me and all this kind of stuff. I don't like it. But you know what it does? It reminds me of my Jesus. Jesus. When they had me in those machines, I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you once again, Lord, for getting me out of this one. And, the, and, and it's the same guy that's going to get you out of whatever you're going through. And it's the same guy that's going to get you into destiny. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.